And the next uh, speech will by uh, Professor uh, Chai Guan Hao. Uh, Professor Chai, uh, he cannot uh, attend in person, so uh, he also provide a pre-recorded uh, uh, video uh, to have this speech. Uh, the title is The Advanced Approach in Achieving Prevention of Post-Operative Adhesion. And, and uh, after the speech, I, I think it is not online. So after the speech, we will have discussion uh, with Professor Hong. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my honor to speak at the A page. The topic I would like to talk about today is the advanced achieving prevention of post-operative adhesion. And adhesion is a fibrous connection between tissue and organs. It's mainly caused by trauma, ischemia, body bodies, hemorrhage, inflammation, and all. Post-operative adhesion formation is the most common complication of abdominal pelvic surgery. It's estimated that 55 to 100 percent of women undergoing gynecological surgical procedures develop adhesion. Approximately 93 percent of patients following initial laparotomy of abdominal surgery develop post-operative adhesion. The most common adhesion related mobility are small bowel obstruction, chronic pelvic pain, secondary infertility, and the needing further surgery. The purpose of the prevention of the post-operative adhesion are multifaceted. To the patients, it could reduce post-operative adhesion related complication and better quality of life. To the surgeon, it could facilitate the re-operation and reduce re-operation complication related to adhesion. To the health care system, it could decrease total health care cost. Adhesion results from frequent exaggerated healing response to injury. On day one, adhesion formation begins immediately following surgery. Microfarges and fibroblasts migrate to the wound surface and the fibrin matrix is formed. And basically, the fibrin matrix continue to develop with the proliferation of a fibroblast and the vascularization begin. On day five, the lesion is increasingly vascular and organized in structure. On day seven, the lesion is mature and may continue to develop but no new adhesion form. High cost of hepatonia repair and adhesion formation within minutes. Excitation, fibrin deposition, and acute inflammation start within hours. The surgical lesion is covered by macrophage. Then, fibrinolysis and the proliferation begin. Epithelial repair start on day one and complete on day three. If repair and fibrinolysis are delayed, fibroblast proliferation start on day three and the angiogenesis start on day five, leading to adhesion formation. Repair can be delayed by factors that maintain local inflammation, such as necrotic tissue, sutures, hypoxia, acidic stress, and the infection. Three cascades are involved in the formation of the adhesion. Blood inflammatory system, fibrinolytic system, and the protein C system. In the formation of fibrin, solving and fibrinogen both play a part. Possibly break down fibrin and prevent permanent fibrous adhesion from developing. Most fibrinols actually are transient and are broken down by fibrinolysis within 72 hours. Trauma-induced local suppression of peritoneal fibrinolysis leading to early fibrinolysis adhesions. The invasion of a fibroblast and the blood vessel soon follows, resulting in permanent adhesion. In a study, let's look at the type of gynecological surgery in benign condition, leading to intra-abdominal adhesions. It was found that 
The difference between the allotomy and the lava stop was independent from the type of surgical intervention considered. Among the different gynecological operations, endometriosis surgery and the myomectomy was thought to be the most likely to be associated with adhesion. There also appears to be some genetic role in adhesion formation. Multiple gene was found to be involved in the pathogenic process. There are three major ways to prevent or reduce adhesions. Surgical techniques, pharmacological agent, and adhesion barrier. Let's talk about surgical technique first. Surgical techniques for prevention of adhesion formation include minimizing surgical trauma, minimizing tissue handling, avoiding peritoneal suturing, or use fine non reactive suture, achieving excellent hemostasis, and avoiding local ischemia, reducing drying or overheating of tissue, avoiding polybodies, removing intraperitoneal blood deposit, and reduce infection risk. In an animal study, post-operation inflammation score was significantly lower in the laparoscopic surgery than in the open surgery. Compared to open surgery, laparoscopic surgery had a significantly lower adhesion size and adhesion severity. In the laparoscopic surgery, surgical stress was reduced by mineral petonia, leading to decreased PAI1. Decreased PAI1 would decrease fibrinolysis and the land diminish adhesion. Additionally, potential advantages of a laparoscopic approach in reducing adhesion formation in gynecological surgery include minimal access to the abdominal cavity, reduced manipulation of structures, and the gentler handling and the precise taxation of an anatomic structure. Retrospective cover study showed Adhesion formation was significantly lower in laparoscopic surgeries than in open surgeries. In multivariate analysis, compared with open surgery, laparoscopic reduced the risk of direct related readmission by 32% and reduced the risk of possibly related readmission by 11%. Next, let's talk about pharmacological aging and the adhesion barriers. Given the different mechanisms involved, adhesion prevention should address all the factors involved state 1 and 2 result in 80% adhesion prevention. Together with step 3, application of a barrier, adhesion prevention become close to 90%. There are many pharmaceutical adhesion prevention strategies, such as anticoagulant, anti-inflammation. However, a committee opinion from SIN concluded that there is no evidence that anti-inflammatory agents reduce post-operative adhesions. What about physical barrier? This comes in two formats. Membrane type anti adhesion materials and gel liquid type anti adhesion materials. Anti adhesion adjuvants approved for gynecological use by United States FDA included intercept for aparotomy, superfine for laparotomy and adapt for laparoscopic surgery. Meta analysis showed hydrofortation aging and the gel aging could reduce the incidence of adhesion. 
However, critical barrier do not increase labor's rate. A committee opinion from SI concluded that there is no substantial evidence that the use of FDA approved anti admission barriers improve fertility, decrease pain, or reduce the instance of a post operative or obstruction. I think that any ideal barrier should have the following six conditions non inflammatory non-immunogenic, persist during the remesal serialization, stay in place without suture, remain active in the present of blood, and completely biodegradable. Because of lack of ideal barrier, we need to combine surgical techniques and multiple adhesion barrier together to reduce post-operative adhesion. In my experience, three combined use of T-cell, co-cell, and adapt solution seem to be able to maximize the anti-adhesion effect. T-cell, the thriving serum, is a biodegradable and a biocompatible combination of human derived fibrinogen and some being activated by calcium chloride, which leads to formation of a malaceous of a polymerized fibrin fibers. Death, I protest here for percent, is an isoosmotic solution, is easy to use for laparoscopic surgery. And the solution resided in peripheral cavity more than four days. That has a hydrofluorotation effect, which provides a temporary separation between lost peritoneal surface, allowing minimizing tissue acquisition during the critical period of fibrin formation and the mesothelial regeneration. Moreover, fluid separation in the peritoneal cavity contributed to prevention of adhesion formation by diluting fibrous exudates released from traumatized cervix. Through the barrier may prevent adhesion formation both at the traumatized area and elsewhere in the pelvis. In addition, it could dilute fibrinous exudates. T cell act like the base coat of the car cervix and the cosial or superfine can be likened to the clear coat that is applied at the very top layer. Procyl, a synthetic hydrogel, is designed to act as a serum around the suture side and uh, to prevent or reduce the distance and extent of post-surgical adhesion formation. Procyl, composed of two synthetic polyethylene glycos, PEGS, and the two solutions, one for dilution and one for buffer. At the height of administration, the mixed PEGS and the solution form a hydrogel and adhesion to the tissue, synthetic graphic material, and covalently bound to each cell. Ocel is an elastic hydrogel. It will remain flexible and adhere to irregular tissue surface without restricting the movement of the surrounding tissue. Procyon maintain a high burst strength. It provides a superphysiological seal up to 660 mm of mercury imposing chaotic arches. Procyon provides its physical mechanical barrier function up to seven days. It degrades via hydrolysis and is completely resolved within 30 days. The characteristic procyl include strongly adherent to tissue and the synthetic graphic surface, forming a very strong seal, rapidly effect providing a barrier between tissue surface to prevent or reduce the severity of the post-operative adhesion formation and the fresco. In a big model, the figure reveal that the average Adhesion percentage scale and 
adhesive tissue tenacity seal after surgery for the coseal group was significantly less than the control group. The meta-analysis of animal models demonstrated the three commercial variable adhesion barrier reduced the adhesion score of the reformed adhesions, namely smoking, BG, and agrodextrin. The randomized double blind study revealed that the hydrogel group had significantly less severe lesion than the control group at the O5 medial spine area after congenital heart surgery. Cochlea were used for the prevention of cardiac lesion in pediatric cardiac surgery, as shown in the figure. Around 85% of lesion were allocated the least severe complication of thinning and vascular. This multi center randomized single blind study showed that the mean modified FS score after the second loop surgery experienced by hydrogel patients was less than the experience by control patients following my method. The adverse effect was similar between hydrogel and the control group. Additional condition for ideal barrier is convenience for application. Cause of force shock in this aspect. Cause of applicator set comes with a fireball flow tip that can be adjusted to the angle, the direction of the spread to the desired area, a distance of three to five centimeters between the spread tip and the area of an interest in suggestion. Today, there appear to be no available anti adhesion barrier that can fulfill all of the bad criteria. We look forward to the development of such a product in the future. At our center, the fine technique of our senior aparoscopist, Dr. Sano Chen, ensure that the initial operation is dedicatedly performed with good primary hemostasis achieved by excellent suture technique. Application of T cell solution over rough surface. Cochlear solution is spread across the area of trauma, ensuring that all visible surfaces are coated. Finally, a depth solution is infused to ensure further prevention of adhesion. Finally, take home message. Enhancing surgical techniques to minimize surgical trauma and achieve excellent hemostasis aid in prevention of post-operative adhesion. Laparoscopic surgery is a preferable approach way. 
the optimal anti adhesive aging or barrier has yet to be presented. In addition to surgical techniques, combined use of fiber serum and the physical barriers seems to be the best strategy to reduce post operation adhesion nowadays. Future perspective will be to investigate the precise pathogenesis of post-operative adhesion and develop effective aging or barrier based on the adhesion formation mechanism. Thanks for your attention.